Hello YouTube land! Before I get into the video, let me remind you, if you like my videos, please hit that like and subscribe button, and also, if you feel the uh, need to support me, hit me up on my Patreon at patreon.com slash uncommonramen. Uh, I do all this in my free time, so any amount of support can help me bring more of this to you more often. Alright, so, today we are going to look at a deck tech for Brimaz Blight of Oreskos. Um kind of on the coattails of the um, March of Machines Aftermath set, uh, because why not? Yeah, that's why. Anyway, uh, this was actually originally going to be a mono-white deck without uh, a Brimaz. I was going to use uh, Skrelv instead, um, but my buddy had built a mono-white Infect deck, and I was kind of wanting to build a mono-white Phyrexian Tribal, and when I built the Mono White Phyrexian Tribal, it looked a whole lot like a Mono White Infect deck, so I decided that I needed to scrap the project. And then I found Brimas, so I decided to make it Orzov instead. So, uh, Brimas Blight of Rescos is two, a white and a black, uh, for a 3 4 body. Whenever you cast a Phyrexian creature or artifact creature spell, uh, incubate X, where X is the spell's mana value. And then at the beginning of each end step, uh, if a Phyrexian died under your control, this turn you get to proliferate so we get to have fun with proliferate and sack triggers and all that stuff so let's take a look at this we're gonna look at the creature base first and um obviously a large portion of this is going to be phyrexian if not most of it or if not all of it um we are going to look at Aaron banali is ruined two white and a black menace three three uh, tap a white and a black and tap this to sacrifice another creature. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. This is really, really good in this deck. Um, especially with all the incubator tokens. If you have a smaller incubator token, that's perfect sack target to just start giving plus one, plus one counters to everything you have. So, very powerful card in this. Then we got Blight Titan. This came with the deck. Uh, four and two black. Uh, Death Touch 6-6. Six, six. When Blight Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, mill two cards. Then Incubate X, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Um, people are going to be trying to keep you well under check, so Blight Titan can get some really good value there. We've got Blight Belly Rat. Um, as I mean, I don't need to explain that this is not an Infect deck, and we're not really going for the whole Infect mechanic, but because we are playing Phyrexian Tribal, and it happens to be black-white, um, we're going to have cards with Toxic and Infect in here, just because that's how it goes. Um, they happen to be best in slots. Uh, Blight Belly Rat is 1 in black for 2-2 two, two Toxic. When Blight Belly Rat dies, it proliferates. I like that ability. Um, people are going to eventually have to kill it because they don't want to take the toxic anymore. And when it dies, we just get to proliferate, which is kind of what we're looking for in this deck. We got Bloated Processor. This guy is two and a black. Um, sacrifice another Phyrexian. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Bloated Processor. When Bloated Processor dies, you get to incubate X, where X is its power. Um, this can eat smaller Phyrexians. Um, it could eat that Blight Belly Rat if you need it. Um, it gets bigger, and as it gets bigger, when it dies, it incubates. Uh, but in total, this thing is really good. Also, if you have response triggers to uh, creatures dying, you can make this bigger and hope for a bigger incubator. Next up, we have Bone Shredder. Now, I might be the only person um, that's confused by this, but did the original Bone Shredder from Saga actually say Phyrexian Minion? Because I could have sworn that it just said Minion summon minion but i could be wrong about that i don't know i don't know when they errated this if they errated it but it is now a phyrexian minion uh for two and a black it has echo two and a black for a one one with flying when it enters the battlefield destroy target non-artifact non non-black uh creature uh just good spot removal uh really nice body it's a body that you're probably not going to pay the echo for so there's going to be um, a lot of things that are going to see that sacrifice trigger, Brimaz being one of them, Bloated Processor being another. Uh, just a cool way to get rid of something and get some value afterward. We've got Completed Huntmaster, two and a black, two, three. Uh, one and tap it, sacrifice another creature or artifact to incubate three. This is another great way, again, even when we're just eating something like the uh, Bone Shredder, to get some extra value out of that. Uh, Bone Shredder is only a 1-1, one, one, uh, and despite the fact that it has flying, 1-1 one, one body isn't all that great, so we get a 3-3 three, three body potentially here. Next we have Darksteel Splicer. 
This guy's kind of a big boy, six and a white for a one one. So it doesn't seem like it's good, but whenever Dark Steel Splicer or another non-token Phyrexian enters the battlefield under your control, you're going to create X three three colorless Phyrexian Golem artifact creature tokens, where X is the number of opponents you have. This can be up to three. Um, well, I guess it could be more if you're not playing in pods of four. I just realized that some people play in bigger pods, which is insane. Uh, golems you have or you control have indestructible, so it creates a bunch of tiny little. Uh, dark steel golems which is kind of cool um and it's every time uh, a, a creature a phyrexian creature enters a non-token phyrexian creature enters the battlefield including itself so yeah it costs six and a white but i'm sure we're going to see some value in this somehow i hope i don't know but anyway it also creates a whole bunch of tokens that you can sacrifice if for whatever reason dark steel splicer dies or just on a whim Next up, we have Ellis Ilcor, Sadistic Pilgrim, one white, one black for a 2-2 death touch. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. Um, this is kind of a Sutra Priest, uh, but in two colors with death touch and a higher power and toughness, I think. Pretty sure the same thing. I like this one better. Uh, next up, we have Elish Norn. This is a double-sided, two and two white for a 3-5 Vigilance. Whenever a source an opponent controls deals damage to you or a permanent you control, that source's controller loses two life uh, unless they pay one. So we're going to tax them. I'm going to punish them for hurting us. Uh, for two and a white, you can sacrifice three other creatures, exile Elish Norn, and return it to the battlefield transformed under its owner's control. Uh, you can only activate that as a sorcery. We're going to go ahead and flip this guy. Put down the rest of the cards here. Sorry for the length of time there. It's going to be the Argent Etchings uh, Saga. So on Chapter 1, incubate uh, incubate 2 five times. Then transform all incubator tokens you control. This is actually really powerful in this kind of a deck. Um, especially with things like Brimaz on the field. Uh, we should see quite a few incubator tokens uh, that we may not have all the mana to uh, transform. Uh, chapter 2, Creatures You Control get plus 1, plus 1, and gain double strike until end of turn. That could end a game, depending on how much your opponents just kind of let you do you. Uh, and then finally, Chapter 3, Destroy All Other Permanents Except for Artifacts, Lands, and Phyrexians. Exile the Ar Argent Etchings, then return it to the battlefield. Um, so this, this last one is a one-sided board wipe in this deck. There isn't a lot in here that doesn't fall under Artifact, Land, or Phyrexian, um, which is kind of one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to run this deck, because this Elish Norn Argent Etchings thing is kind of fun. Uh, that being said, it's also really freaking expensive. Um, so I don't know how often we're going to see that happen, but uh, it's a fun little tech in this deck that I felt needed to be in here. I don't know. Anyway, next up we have Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. Uh, this is four and a white for a 4-7 Vigilance. Uh, if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. And permanents entering the battlefield don't cause abilities of permanents your opponents control to trigger. So we're going to double up on our ETB effects. We're going to shut down their ETB, ETB effects. But there's also more to that than just ETBs. Um, I really like this card uh, because we get to double up on our ETB triggers. So now our Dark Steel Splicer is suddenly um, creating uh, six in total. Well, I guess if you have if you have three opponents. Um, there, it's creating double the amount of golems, uh, as well as a bunch of other things in here. Uh, um, what was it? Bone Shredder is going to see two triggers, so on and so forth. So it's a really cool card. Next up, we have Essence of Orthodoxy. Three and two white for a 3-3 three, three flying. When Essence of Orthodoxy or another Phyrexian enters the battlefield under your control, you get to incubate two. Again, with the Elish Norn, we're seeing double that trigger. Um, this is just really cool because we're going to see a bunch of these incubators hit the table. And like I said, we're looking for sack fodder. So the smaller the incubator, the better sack target it is for a ton of the different things in this deck that you'll see a ton of value for if it ever, you know, gets rolling. Your opponents will check you a lot. Uh, we got Filigree Vector. Filigree Vector came with the deck, I, I believe. Uh, three and a white 
for a 1-1 one, one when filigree vector enters the battlefield. Put a plus one plus one counter on each of any number of target creatures and a charge counter on each of any number of target artifacts. And then you can tap one and it and sacrifice another artifact to proliferate. So I like this uh, in here, especially with Brimaz, because once we proliferate with this, Brimaz is going to see that and proliferate again. Um, so really cool. Love it. Um, needs to be in the deck, so it's obvious why it is. Uh, next up is Grafted Butcher. One and a black for a 2-2 when Grafted Butcher enters the battlefield. Phyrexines you control gain menace until end of turn. Uh, other Phyrexines you control get plus one, plus one. And three and a black, sacrifice an artifact or creature, return Grafted Butcher from your graveyard to the battlefield, activate only as a sorcery. All three lines here are really good. Uh, the first line here gives menace, so we get some... It's on ETB, gives menace. So we get uh, a little bit of evasion there, makes it much harder for your opponents to block. Uh, it's a lord, um, and in, then its ability to return itself from the graveyard to the battlefield feeds into Brimaz. Uh, there's nothing bad about this card. At least in this deck. Next up, we have Massacre Worm. This is another that came in the deck. And another one of those... Did the original Massacre, Massacre Worm actually say Phyrexian Worm? I don't remember it actually saying Phyrexian Worm. And I, I haven't gone to check that. But I don't remember it actually being a Phyrexian Worm. Which is interesting. It got reprinted maybe in a 20 set. Or a 21? M20, M21 set? And maybe it was Phyrexian and I just didn't notice. It doesn't matter. Either way, Masker Worm. Three and, two, uh, three and three black for a 6-5 when Masker Worm enters the battlefield. Uh, creatures your opponents control get minus two, minus two until end of turn. And whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. This can be devastating against a player who's playing really small creatures. Uh, token swing wide decks do not like to see this card um, unless they have sack outlets or some way to respond. Uh, so this is just a fantastic card. <laughs> And it's a Phyrexian, so go figure. Next up, we have Might Overseer. Three and a white first strike for four with a 4-2 body. As long as it's your turn, Creatures, creature tokens you control get plus one, plus oh, and have first strike. Uh, for three and a Phyrexian white mana, you can create a 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Might artifact creature token with toxic one, and this creature can't block. Um, yes, we definitely can give our Mites um, plus one, plus oh, and first strike, and all that good stuff. Uh, but that's not the biggest reason it's in here. Uh, the incubator tokens are tokens, as well as the 3-3 golems from the splicer. So this sees a lot of value in general in this deck. Next up, we have Maudrak, Glory Dominus. Two and two white for a 4-4. Four, four. This guy is a walking anointed procession. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, twice that many of those tokens are created instead. One and two white, two Phyrexian white. You can sacrifice two other artifacts and or creatures to put an indestructible counter on Mondrak Glory Dominus. Again, feeds right into Brimaz. There's lots of value here. Um, we're a token deck, so this is just getting tons of value. Next up, we have Mer Convert 2 for a 2-1 body Toxic 1. You can tap it to pay 2 life and add 1 mana of any color. It's a good color fixer. Um, I don't. It's a Phyrexian. It's, it's good. I like it. Next up, we have Norn Squire Master, 3 and 2 white for a 5-4 flying first strike. Whenever a commander you control enters the battlefield or attacks, you get to proliferate. Um, this one's in here for obvious reasons. We we saw this in Ixhel for the same reason, but the proliferate in here not only is going to hit those uh, poison tokens, but it's also going to hit the plus one plus encounters that are just all over these incubators. So it's just a great way to continuously grow the incubators um, to make them really deadly and force your opponents to have to answer it. Otherwise, they die. Norn's Inquisitor. Is the Choir Master part of the deck? No. A lot of this isn't. I'm actually surprised. There should have been a lot more. Anyway. Uh, Norn's Inquisitor. One and a white for a 1-1 one, one when Norn's Inquisitor enters the battlefield. Incubate two. Uh, whenever a permanent you control transforms into a Phyrexian. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, this one's just support. For an uncommon, this is actually pretty good. Good support for incubators. Uh, Phyrexian Sensor, two and a white. Each player can't cast more than one non-Phyrexian spell each turn, and non-Phyrexian creatures enter the battlefield tapped. If we're going to play Phyrexian Tribal, we might as well tax people for playing things that aren't Phyrexian, especially considering this deck is actually disgustingly slow. Um, even with a fixed mana base, and I don't even think I fixed it that well, 
Um, this deck is disgustingly slow. We've got Phyrexian Delver, three and two black. Uh, for a 3-2 body, when Phyrexian Delver enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, you lose life equal to its uh, mana cost. Card's mana value. Um, this game in the deck, uh, but is just really good at recursion for something that you need. Maybe that Dark Steel Splicer needs to come back. I don't know. But there's going to be tons of targets that you can choose for this. So, Next up, we have Phyrexian Obliterator. This guy is 4 black for a 5-5 five, five Trample. Uh, whenever a source deals damage to Phyrexian Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. Um, yeah, this is just good. If it blocks, your opponent has to sacrifice stuff. Uh, if it attacks and gets blocked, your opponent has to sacrifice stuff. If it gets targeted by any kind of damage, your opponent has to sacrifice stuff. This is kind of a nasty card. Phyrexian Obliterator is just good. Next up, we have Phyrexian Rager. Uh, two and a black for a 2-2 body. When Phyrexian Rager enters the battlefield, draw a card and lose one life. Uh, the, I, I like this because it's Phyrexian. Uh, I also like the card draw. Uh, it's not a super good card, but it's also not a terrible card. And there are a lot of terrible cards you could pick. Phyrexian Vindicator. Uh, this is four white for a 5-5 five, five flying. If damage would be dealt to Phyrexian Vindicator, prevent that damage. When damage is prevented this way, Phyrexian Vindicator deals that much damage to any other target. So Phyrexian Vindicator is supposed to be the white version of Phyrexian Obliterator. Uh, but in this case, if it does take damage, it's just going to redirect that damage and just outright not take it. Um it changes the, the damage source as well from whatever it was to it uh, by preventing it and then dishing it back out. Uh, super good card. Um, it's got flying too, so this guy is kind of a menace. Uh, sorry about that. Then we got Progenitor Exarch. This guy is 2x and a white. When Progenitor Exarch enters the battlefield, incubate 3x times. You can tap this card to transform target incubator token you control, and it is a 1-2. Um, this card is interesting. If you dump 6 into it and then pay the white, you get 3 times 3. So that's 3 uh, incubate 3s. But it's really MVP ability here is that you just get to tap it to transform something so originally you'd have to pay two to transform a incubator um so this is just really cool a uh, very fast way of just getting incubators out there pretty quickly since it's kind of slow we've got ria ivor bane of blade hold two a black and a white for a three four body with battle cry at the beginning of combat on your turn the next time target creature would deal combat damage to one or more players this combat this combat, prevent that damage. If damage is prevented this way, create that many 1-1 one, one colorless might. Phyrexian might artifact creature tokens with toxic 1, and this creature can't block. Uh, this is in here for token generation. Obviously, it's it's really good at creating those tokens. You only have to choose one creature to prevent the damage. Um, so if you're not looking to end a game right away, or you're at the beginning of the game, or you're at the mid part of the game and you need a lot of tokens to swing wide with, this is the card you need to deal with. Next up, we have Scheming, Scheming Aspirant. This one felt like it should have been included in the deck, and maybe it was. I don't remember seeing it in there. Scheming Aspirant is one in a black for a 1-3 body. Whenever you proliferate, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Uh, we're going to try and proliferate a lot. I mean, that's kind of the secondary part of this, not just creating the tokens, but then proliferating a lot. So this should see a lot of value. And it should have been in the deck. I personally believe that. I don't know if it was, though. I don't remember. Next up, we got Shielded the Apocalypse. I don't have Shielded the Whispering one, or at least I don't think I do. I might. I'd have to go looking. So I felt like putting Shielded the, uh, the Apocalypse in here. Whispering one was the one that they wanted in the deck. Um, when I was looking at tons of deck lists, they all chose Whispering One, and I can see why. Reoccurring things from the graveyard, super good. Uh, so instead, we're going to tax people for drawing cards. This is a 4-5 four, for 4, 2 and 2 black, uh, with Death Touch. Whenever you draw a card, you gain 2 life. Whenever your opponent draws a card, they lose 2 life. Uh, it's pretty simple. Your opponents want this dead no matter what. Uh, in Commander, we're notoriously trying to draw more than one card per turn, so this can be a total menace. Next up, we have Skrelv. We have to have Skrelv. Uh, Skrelv Defector Might is 1 for a 1-1. One, one. Toxic 1. Skrelv Defector Might can't block. You can pay 1 Phyrexian White Mana and tap it to choose a color. 
Another target creature you control gains Toxic 1 and Hexproof from that color until end of turn. It can't be blocked by creatures of that color this turn. This is kind of like a pseudo-protection ability. I don't know why Wizards went away from protection from. Um, they still do it on certain cards, but then they have text like this that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, Skrull of Defector Might is just a, a kind of staple if you're running any kind of Phyrexian Tribal or Infect, and it's in white. It's just too good. It's like Mother of Runes, except, I don't know, maybe slower, but slightly better. I don't, I don't know. It's good. Next up, we have Terror of Tawashi. Two and two black for a 4-3 with Death Touch. When Terror of Tawashi attacks, you may pay three and a black. When you do, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's a Phyrexian in addition to its other types. I like this for recursion, especially when we get to the last card in here. Um, recursion for that is going to be a nightmare. Plus, it turns it into a Phyrexian. I like this card. This card's good. I don't know why. The, if this wasn't in the deck, I don't understand why. Then we have Vulpine Harvester. Uh, this was already in the deck. It's three and a white uh, for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever one or more Phyrexians you control attack, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield if its mana value is less than or equal to uh, their total power. This is kind of a... Um, what do they call it? Sun Titan? Uh, except slightly cheaper and the ability is dependent on amount of power attacking it's kind of like sun titan uh, i like this again for the recursion and obviously when we get to this last card you'll understand why and then finally we have worm coil engine um this is one where i assumed that it would say like artifact creature for Xian worm but it doesn't even though it was literally on mirrodin and i think specifically that it was Phyrexian. So I don't I don't get that, but it is what it is. Worm Coil Engine, 6 for a 6-6 six, six Death Touch Lifelink. When Worm Coil Engine dies, you get to create a 3-3 three, three Colorless Worm Artifact Creature Token with Death Touch and a 3-3 three, three Colorless Worm Artifact Creature Token with Lifelink. Uh, yeah, this is super good. And with Mondrak, you get to create two of each, and then you have the Terror of Tawashi or the Bullpine Harvester that can just fetch this guy back to your hand, replay it, do all kinds of nasty things. This is crazy. Um, it has a, a notorious... Um, uh, history for a reason because it's a very powerful card so that is the creatures next up is the instance all right we have deadly dispute one in a white as initial cost to cast a spell sacrifice an artifact or creature to uh, draw two cards and create a treasure token pretty self-explanatory very good card in here we have to spark for one white, one black. Exile target permanent with mana value 4 or greater. Always hitting those bigger targets. Super good. It exiles, so it gets around uh, indestructible. We got Excise the Imperfect. One and two white. Exile target non-land permanent. Its controller incubates X, where X is its mana value. Um, this is a fantastic new removal spell that's kind of like a swords or path except that it hits any non-land permanent and you can't really argue with that that's super good mortify one in a black and a white destroy target creature or, or enchantment we're here for versatility path to exile exile target creatures controller may search their library for a basic land card put that onto the battlefield then shuffle uh for one white it exiles we've got swords of plowshares exile target creature its controller gains life equal to uh, its power again super quick it's exit and it exiles we've got Vraska's fall two and a black each opponent sacrifices creature or planeswalker and gets a poison counter there's no downside to this um even its mana cost really is pretty good considering the poison counter thingy next up is sorceries we got Infectious Inquiry. Two and a black. You draw two cards and lose two life. Each opponent gains gets a poison counter. Um, this is super cheap for what it what you're getting out of this. Knight's Whisper. One and a black. You draw two cards and lose two life. That's a good uh, example why it's so good. Fresis Outbreak. This is two and a black. Each opponent uh, gets a poison counter, and then each creature your opponent's control gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each poison counter on its or that its controller has. Uh, this could be a board wipe, and I love it. We got Phyrexian Rebirth, four and two white to destroy all creatures, then create an XX colorless Phyrexian Horror artifact creature token where X is the number of creatures destroyed this way. Um, it's just good. Next up, we have Sunfall, three and two white. Exile all creatures, incubate X, where X is the number of creatures exiled this way. It's very similar to the previous one. Uh, I like this one because it exiles all creatures, so indestructible means absolutely nothing. So good luck with your heroic intervention. Good luck with your 
your root bound defenses, blah, blah, blah. Next up, we have Victimize. Two in a black. Choose two target creature cards in your graveyard. Uh, sacrifice a creature. If you do, return those cards to the battlefield tapped. Uh, you can't go wrong with this. And you get to sacrifice a creature, which Brim has Cs. Very good. Uh, white Sun's Twilight. X and two white. You gain X life for... Er, and then create X 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian might artifact creature tokens with toxic one. And this creature can't block. If X is five or more, destroy all other creatures. I love this card. It's so good. I don't understand why this card is so good. I think it's the best Twilight. Next up is Artifacts. All right. This is going to be our rocks as well, starting with Arcane Signet, because you can't have a commander deck with multiple colors without an Arcane Signet. Then we got Bitterhorn. This is Amin Animus. Aminus. Animus. Animus. Uh, three for a living weapon. means it comes in with a... Uh, uh, might? No, sorry. Germ token. Uh, equipped creature gets my, or plus one, plus one. Whenever equipped creature attacks, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle. Equips for three. Uh, it's like sort of the anim er, animist. Sort of the animist. Uh, but it's not. It's Nissa's animus. Anyway, moving on. Contagion Clasp. Two, when it enters the battlefield, uh, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. You can tap four and it to, uh, to proliferate. We got... Contagion Engine, six. Uh, when Contagion Engine enters the battlefield, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature target player controls. Uh, four tap, proliferate, then proliferate again. You get a double proliferate for this guy. And it costs the same for that. Everflowing Chalice, zero. Multi-Kicker, two. Uh, enters the battlefield with a number of charge counters on it equal to the number of times it was kicked. And you tap it for colorless mana equal to the number of charge counters on it. Glistening Sphere. Three. Glistening Sphere, enter, sphere enters the battlefield tapped. When Glistening Sphere enters the battlefield, proliferate. Add one mana of any color. And then if a opponent has three or more poison counters on them, you can tap it to add three mana of any one color. Uh, you can't argue with that. This is just a really good card. Super good value. Mindstone taps for one colorless. You can tap one and it to sacrifice it to draw a card, and it costs two. We got Norn's Annex for three and two Frexian white mana. Uh, creatures cannot attack you unless their opponents pay a Frexian white mana for each creature attacking you. Next up, we have Norn's Wellspring, one and white. Whenever a creature you control dies, scry one and put an oil counter on Norn's Wellspring. Uh, for one, you can tap it to remove two oil counters from it to draw a card. There's a lot of value in that. Um, not only does Brimass see the, sa uh, the creatures dying, um, there's the, the drawing cards with, uh, Shildred, all kinds of value in that. Next up, we have Orzhov Signet. It's two taps, one taps for one and it for, uh, white and black. We've got Frexian Altar three, uh, sacrifice creature, add one mana of any color. That's a great sack outlet. It's a great way to pay for things. It's a great way for Brimaz to get a lot of value. Just a cool card. Next up, we have Skull Clan. This costs one equipped creature gets one, uh, plus one minus one, and whenever equipped creature dies, you get to draw two cards. Equips for one. Uh, you can just use this on your mites to just get instant value. Uh, and again, I don't know the uh, Shieldred just really benefits from that. Next up, we have Soul Ring one to tap for two. Then we got Talisman of Hierarchy. This guy costs two. You can tap it for colorless, or you can tap it to add white or black. If you have Talisman of Hierarchy, deal one damage to you. All right, next up is Enchantments. Starting with Norn's Decree. Whenever one or more creatures on opponent controls deals combat damage to you, that opponent gets a poison counter. This costs two and a white. Uh, whenever a player attacks, if one or more... Uh, whenever a player attacks, if one or more players being attacked are poisoned, uh, the attacking player draws a card. Uh, we're incentivizing them attacking each other as opposed to you, and we're disincentivizing them from attacking us by giving the poison counters when they attack us, so it's just a really great card. And you get to give them value for attacking other people. Yes, they get to draw a card. I understand that, but we have Shouldred, so they lose two life every time they draw a card. All in all, I think it's a bit, it's an okay uh, wash. Next up, we have Frexian Arena. One into black during your upkeep. You draw a card and lose a life. Phyrexian Awakening. This is two and a white when Phyrexian Awakening enters the battlefield. Incubate four, and then Phyrexians you control have Vigilance. That's super cool because that means we can block with them unless they're mites, in which case giving them Vigilance means absolutely nothing. 
Then we have Sculpted Perfection 2, a white and a black. Whenever a Sculpted Perfection enters the battlefield, incubate 2. Uh, for X and G control, get plus 1, plus 1. So we got another Lord, and we get some incubating out of that. Then finally, we got Skrelv's Hive. Uh, one and a white at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose a life and create a 1-1 uh, colorless Phyrexian Might artifact creature token with Toxic and this creature can't block. Uh, if one of your opponents has three or more poison counters on them, uh, creatures you control uh, with Toxic also have lifelink. So, you know, Swing Wide also gets really deadly with that. I don't know. I like it. Skrull's Hive is really good. Uh, we have one Planeswalker and it's obvious. Uh, Vraska, uh, Vraska Betrayal's uh, Sting. This is four, a black, and a Phyrexian black. If you play, no, sorry, if you pay the Phyrexian black, uh, she comes in with two or two fewer um, loyalty. Uh, for zero, you can draw a card and lose a life and proliferate, so it's basically plus one. Uh, for minus two, target creature becomes a treasure artifact creature. Sorry, treasure artifact with tap sack. It just turns, it's basically elking something, but not because it turns into a treasure and I guess has some value. I don't understand why that... Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, um, and it says target creature, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. That's a really good ability. Uh, minus nine. If target player has fewer than nine poison counters on them, they get a number of poison counters equal to the difference, putting them one away from death's door, one proliferate from dead. I love that ability. It's super good. Minus nine. If we can protect her, pretty good. All right, next up is going to be non-basic lands. Uh, starting with Bajuka Bog, has to be in here. Uh, we get to blank somebody's graveyard. Uh, taps for black. Uh, comes into play tapped. Very good. We got Caves of Coilus. Uh, you can tap it for colorless, or you can tap it for white or black. Uh, if you do, Caves of Coilus does, deals one damage to you. We got Command Tower. Taps for co uh, Commander's Color Identity. We got Exotic Orchard taps for whatever your opponent's lands can tap for. We got Fetid Heath. It's a filter land for white and black. Um, came with the deck. Very good. Godless Shrine, Shock Land for white black counts for as a Plains in the Swamp. We got Goldmire Bridge. Uh, is indestructible. Enters play tap. Taps for white and black. Isolated Chapel. Check land for white black. Karn's Bastion taps for colorless, or you can tap four and it to proliferate. Again, we're just trying to increase the number of proliferate abilities that we have going through the deck. We have Path of Ancestry. Um, so, enters the battlefield tap, taps for whatever color uh, your commander's color identity is, and whenever a creature is cast using that mana, if it shares a creature type with your commander, uh, you get to scry one. Got Shine Shadow Snarl, uh, check land for white black. Or actually, it's a reveal land for white black. Uh, Tainted Field, um, taps for white black only if you control a swamp already, uh, otherwise it taps for colorless. Got Temple of Silence, Scryland for White Black, enters tapped. We got Seed Core, uh, taps for one. You can tap it to add one mana of any color and spend this mana only to cast for X and creature spells. <laughs> what do you know? Uh, and if your opponent is corrupted, you can have target one, one creature, get plus two, plus one until end of turn, and activate that ability, obviously, if they're corrupted. Um, so this sees the mites and makes them a little bit more powerful. I like that ability. We got Vault of Champions this is a crowd land for black white. And then finally we got Vault of the Archangel. Uh, taps for colorless, or you can tap two, a white, and a black, and it and creatures you control gain death touch and lifelink until end of turn. Uh, this could end a game. Um, it really forces your opponents to be careful how they block. <laughs> finally, we're gonna look at basic lands. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Planes and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight swamps. So that is going to be the Brimaz uh, Blight of Oresco's Phyrexian Tribal Deck. Uh, it, you can definitely take this the infect direction. Um, and with black white, infect can be really disgusting. Uh, I didn't choose to go infect because I had already done the Abzan Ixtel deck as infect, and I felt like that was. Um, good enough. Uh, plus you get an extra color with green, if I remember correctly, because it's Abdan, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Brimaz, Blight of Oreskos, uh, Phyrexian Tribal, we're trying to incubate, proliferate, and then kill your opponents. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. And, uh, keep it positive. I will remove any negative comments. We don't need that in here. And I guess that's it, guys. Until next time. Peace.